From left side, right side games, I'm Artie Q. Pebbleton, and this is Chalking Points. Ben via Facebook wants to know about the, quote, addition of the unnecessary B to words like doubt and subtle, end quote. Ben, I have bad news. It is the fault of those wacky Latinists! Now, it's not those same Latinists I yelled at in the terminal prepositions video, click here. Those were 19th century pedants, the ones Jeff Nunberg calls, quote, amateur peevologists, end quote. No, the unpronounced bees in words like doubt, subtle, and debt come from 15th and 16th century scribes. This spelling tendency can't be traced back to any one person insofar as I've found, but I can tell you my best guess at how it happened. As you know, my internet chums, English is a Germanic language that has a lot of French in it because of the time that the Norman French invaded England in 1066, bringing their language with them. This is how Latin words entered English, because Latin is French's parent language. In Latin, the word for to doubt is dubitare. Note the B in dubitare, but the French word for doubt is doubt, and indeed, that was how it was spelled in English until the 16th century. The 13th century English historian Robert of Gloucester, in line 376 of his Life and Martyrdom of Thomas Becket, writes, quote, Vanna was the bishop in Greta Duta. You see? Looking at the Oxford English Dictionary, I don't see a citation for doubt with a B until 1556. But why, you're asking? Why the silent B in subtle, originally from the Latin subtilis, and then from the old French souti, and the silent B in debt from the Latin debitum, and then from the old French debt? Why precisely, I cannot say. I can't get inside the head of long-dead English scribes who, when translating from French to English, decided to put bees in where none had previously existed. But I can hazard a guess. If you knew English well enough to write it down in medieval Europe, you doubtless knew Latin and Greek, because by and large that was the language that the Bible was in. There are a few factors at play here for our medieval scholars. First, there are no dictionaries yet, so there isn't any standardized spelling in English. Second, Latin is a holy tongue, and getting more in touch with Latin is important to the English intelligentsia, because they want to be closer to God. So to reflect English's relationship with Latin, the B goes into all these words. But it's too late to change the pronunciation, because at this point, the B-list spellings, and therefore their B-list pronunciations, have been bouncing around the lexicon for about 300 years. Bill Bryson in his book The Mother Tongue says, quote, making English grammar conform to Latin rules is like asking people to play baseball using the rules of football, end quote. The long and the short of it is that those wacky Latinists made it harder for all of us, and unless English develops a language authority that adjudicates spelling conventions, this is just how it's gonna be, unfortunately. Ben, thanks for your question, and a special shout out to Zeptimius on Reddit for reminding me about Bill Bryson and pointing me in the right direction for this episode. Thank you. This was a fun one, folks. I got to do some fun medieval guesswork, and I always like going to that well, especially if I get to spit all over my microphone by speaking Middle English. Oh, and here is a question eager fans. Greg, who wanted to know about ketchup, thinks that people who like these videos should have some kind of name. This is by no means something I can determine, but it is certainly something I can foment amongst you. So, leave your ideas in the comments below. What are you, chocoholics, artisans, the Pointer Sisters, and as always, drop me a line here on YouTube, or check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or our website, lsrsgames.com. Until next time, laugh, learn, light up your language. I'm Artie Q. Pebbleton, and I'll see you around. To learn more about a different kind of bee, check out this video about the waggle dance of the honeybee. You are welcome. See you next week.